the assessment of immune therapy responses uh, on cancer, you know, is always kind of a little bit tainted by the idea of when do we see response? Is there pseudoprogression, for instance, to kind of a imaging phenomenon due to the infiltration, the inflammatory infiltration of lymphocytes into the cancer. And so having early assessment of responses using circulating markers like ctDNA would be very helpful, in particular really to identify early on, do we see a response and distinguish between pseudo, pseudo progression and real progression. And we have seen data actually presented at ASCO last year, yeah, seven months ago, that the, uh, that ctDNA levels can actually be highly predictive of response to immunotherapy in various different cancers. So we, this was still an early group of, a group of patients, not more than 70 patients that were tested, but it was very interesting that these patients actually showed a drop in their ctDNA, which predicted response to immunotherapy. We need to figure out how best to use this. And one way, of course, is to do very tightly designed randomized studies and, and the like, and those are being done. But I actually kind of like the, the bespoke trial. It's, a, it's more of a registry, really, because it lets, uh, in certain scenarios, us to collect data on large numbers of patients, real world evidence, um, and incorporate this kind of test and to see what did the physician do, what, you know, what did the patient receive, how did they turn out. And I think by collecting this kind of data over the next couple of years, we will truly advance this field for us within colorectal cancer. So bespoke is not anything terribly fancy. It's really mostly a registry study, um, but it's, I think, going to be very important in informing um, the use of ctDNA in daily practice. Let's say this is really starting to click and work. And so not only are we talking about yes, no on therapy, but I think maybe even more importantly, it becomes the way we follow patients after their diagnosis. So right now with colon cancer, for example, you have your surgery, you might get your chemotherapy, and then you have a very nervous five years while you're being monitored with CEA and CT scans to know whether or not you're cured or not, and it's a big deal. What this test might do is replace all of that, where instead of going to get CTs and all of this, you get this blood test every now and then. And what we're hoping is that when it does show up, or if it does show up, you see it earlier than we saw it before. And this may give us new opportunities for a therapeutic intervention. At the same time, we will see more patients with a positive circulating tumor DNA, but whose scans are negative. And so we've created this new controversy about, well, what are we going to do with those people? Do we jump right in with chemotherapy? Do we wait and see what happens? We know it's going to regrow. Um, we don't know yet. And so it'll be great to start to study that patient who relapses just with the ctDNA, but not yet by traditional measures of a CT scan and how best to intervene. Let's, let's think about one more scenario where you could use a test like this. So I've given a treatment, whatever it is, could be a checkpoint inhibitor, could be a chemotherapy, it doesn't matter. I've started a treatment. Today, what I do is I give that treatment for eight, maybe 12 weeks. I expose the patient to that therapy for a long period of time. Side effects, cost. I then do a scan and see if the cancer got better or not. What if I had a test that after two weeks of treatment, if the ctDNA level fell, it's a very strong indicator that the treatment's working. If the ctDNA is rising, it's a pretty strong indicator that it's not. So what we may end up doing is having an early readout using this kind of analysis that we're having a clinical benefit or not continuing therapies that are working, avoiding therapies that are not. In a community setting like the kind of hybrid model that I work in with breast cancer centers by definition a community setting and linked to a university, the University of Tennessee, the MRD testing can be operationalized. So we have actually started doing it. And my challenge right now is more trying to find ways to communicate results to patients because that's not trivial. What does a positive ctDNA test mean when normally you would say without treatment, patient has a 100% risk of eventually being diagnosed with metastatic disease? That's 
this it challenges that I and a lot of people have to wrap their heads around. I also believe that community physicians need to be educated about the prognostic value, treatment consequences, and again, communication strategies with, with patients, um, and the sensitivity and specificity of tests. It's a new era. It's a new way to identify you know, in making treatment decisions for patients, identifying patients at high risk of recurrence. So there is a lot of, let's say, educational need that uh, we still have. Um, and I would actually believe that we need to include patient advocates to really identify the best communication strategy um, with patients, you know, that community oncologists and oncologists in general will be facing.